If you've been developing cheats for more than about 12 minutes, you'd have definitely heard of the terms internal and external. But what do they actually mean? External cheats, as the name implies, are hacks that run outside of the game. But internal cheats, on the other hand, are hacks that run within the game itself. These bring a bunch of benefits because your own code is running within the game, granting you direct memory access, allowing you to easily call and hook game functions. With that being said, there is one very important thing to think about. How exactly do you even get an internal cheat into the game? Well, today we're diving into one of the most essential tools in internal cheat development, injectors. What they are, how they work, and how they let your cheat live inside a game's process rent-free. Before we can talk about injectors, we need to talk about what's actually being injected. Internal cheats on Windows come in the form of DLLs, Dynamic Link Libraries, also sometimes referred to as modules. You've definitely seen these files before. They're used by pretty much every program on your computer. These are libraries that are designed to be loaded at runtime. That's the dynamic part of it. Games use them all the time to modularize their code. So instead of rebuilding the entire project for one small change, you can just update the DLL, saving a ton of time. Hackers are able to take advantage of this design. By forcing the game to load your own DLL, you can run custom code within the game itself, allowing you to create advanced and performant cheats, including aimbots, ESPs, and much more. So how exactly do games or programs in general load these DLLs when they need them? Every single running program loads a bunch of them. Some are system DLLs like Kernel32, others are third-party ones like Steam API. All of this is handled by the Windows API, more specifically by a function called load library. This function pretty much tells Windows, hey, go load this DLL into my process for me. And Windows does all the heavy lifting, mapping it into memory, running its initialization code, and tracking that it's now part of the process. Sounds good, but how do we use the system to inject our own cheats? Well, it's actually stupidly easy. You call load library, but call it from another program. This is called standard injection, load library injection, or even native injection. And it works something like this. You open a handle to the target process from your injector. In this case, it'll be the game. You allocate some memory in it because you need to pass the DLL's location to the load library function. Once you've done that, you write the path of your DLL into that allocated memory. And finally, you create a remote thread that calls load library with the path you specified. Boom, your cheat is now inside the game and you can do this with less than 100 lines of code. Now, you might be wondering, why would Windows even allow this? That's because, believe it or not, there are legitimate uses for injecting DLLs. For example, the Discord overlay, MSI Afterburner, and Steam all inject themselves into the game. Now, since Windows supports it, so do anti-cheats. That's the downside here. Since the operating system handles this kind of injection, it also tracks it, which means anti-cheats can easily detect it. But in terms of development and testing, it's perfect because you can easily inject with load library and uninject using free library. You can also attach a debugger to your game and debug the DLL step by step, allowing you to easily and quickly iterate over your code. Just don't expect to use this against something like Vanguard, BattleEye or EAC. So that begs the question, what would you use against one of those more advanced anti-cheats? Well, now we're entering much more advanced territory, manual injection, also known as manual mapping. Unlike load library injection, manual mapping doesn't use the operating system's API to load the DLL directly. Instead, you, as the hacker, must mimic what the operating system would normally do. You read the DLL yourself, map it into the game's memory, resolve its imports, run the entry point manually, and crucially, you do not register it with the operating system. The result? The system has no idea your DLL is even there, unless it really tries. That makes it much harder for anti-cheats to detect. Now, there are two categories here. User mode manual mapping stays entirely in user mode and doesn't need a driver. It's much easier to write and safer to use, but much more limited. The other option is kernel mode manual mapping. This uses a kernel driver to inject your DLL. This is much more powerful with better stealth capabilities, but it requires a signed driver or some form of exploit to manually map the driver. Manual mappers are very stealthy, but they come with a few trade-offs. You can't easily debug the injected DLL and you can't call free library to unload it. Instead, you have to reverse the mapping process if you want to clean it up. That's why most good injectors give you both options, load library for debugging and manual mapping for stealth. So which method should you use? Well, load library is fine for games with no or very weak anti-cheats, or for when you're still developing and debugging your cheat. On the other hand, manual mapping is better when you're going against strong anti-cheats. Just keep in mind that every game and every anti-cheat is different. What works on one game might get you banned instantly on another. Unfortunately, no one-size-fits-all solution exists. 
So to wrap things up, when it comes to internal cheat development, injectors are just as important as the cheat itself. Without an injector, your DLL is literally just another file sitting on your hard drive. Load library gives you ease of use and good debugging. Manual mapping gives you stealth at the cost of complexity and the best developers know exactly when to use which one. This video was meant to give you a general introduction and foundation on how injectors work for internal cheats. This is in preparation for an injector tutorial that I plan on releasing in just a little bit. Followed by that, I'm gonna have some CS2 internal and external cheat tutorials. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to drop a like, subscribe, and tell me what to cover next. As always, shout out to my sexy patrons. You guys are awesome. And until next time, cheers and peace out.